We praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy in your favor. God is a good God. We look to it. Father, we come to you this morning again, and we give thanks to you again. Another day, Lord, you have blessed us, God, in spite of all of the trials and the situations, circumstances around about us. You have sustained us and you have kept us, and we give you praise, honor, and glory for it in the name of Jesus. And we ask you this day, your will be done, Lord. Your will be done, Lord, in this congregation, Lord, in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Trust everyone is doing good this morning. At least you look good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, yes, yes Amen. Yes, yes. You know, this week I uh, I have a song that's downloaded to me, and the name of it was I'm, I'm going to stand on God's word until He returns. I mean, know that we got to do that. We got to stand on His right. word until He returns. That's right. And it says, mm-hmm. I can't believe what I see in this day and hour. How many mm-hmm. can't believe what they see in this day? There's some stuff going on to you like every day. What? I can't believe this. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. said, the love of many has gone cold. I mean, people just just right. fussing, mm-hmm. talking mm-hmm. about each other, whatever, anything they can drag up. And it's all about me. This, this is what it is. It's all about me, myself, and I. Mm-hmm. They are lovers in themselves. Mm-hmm. And the yeah, next verse yeah. says, many are deceived in this day and hour. Mm-hmm. They believe a lie before the truth. But God has pre-warned us it would be like this. Now, he pre-warned mm-hmm. us. He says in the last That's days right. it's going to be like this. That's People are right. going to be lovers of themselves. Sure We've got to stand on God's word. Sometimes when you see it, you think, oh, I can't believe this has happened. But then you have to go back to the word. Mm-hmm. He done already mm-hmm. pre-warned us. He done told us it's going to be this way. So, you know, we shouldn't be shocked at what we see, you know. But we as saints of God, we mm-hmm. must stand on God's word. You know, we can't be doing what they doing because they said right. this. They said this. Who is they? What does the <laughs> word of God say? We yeah. have to stand on his word. Right. And the last verse says, you know, you can talk about me as much as you please. Listen, I've been talked about so much, so you can still talk about me all you want to, you know. But I'm <laughs> going to still serve the Lord. I'm going to be like Joshua. Me and my house, you know, we're going to serve the Lord. For God will mm-hmm. soon return for me, and I'm going to stand on God's word. See, mm-hmm. God, you know, people now are like, oh, is it really God? Oh, they're just doing all kind of crazy <laughs> stuff. But listen, there's a God, and he's going to return for us one day. And, yeah, I, and right. I'm hoping that it's coming. I'm, I'm praying so, that all my family, my, my <coughs> in-laws, anybody that I know, they be saved because, this, and I don't that's want nobody right. to go to hell. That's right. So I'm going to stand on God's word. If I have to be the only one to stand, I'm going to stand. You know, hum, hum, you going to stand with me? I'm uh, standing. All right. That is my intention. That's right. By the Praise grace the of God, that is power, <laughs> power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you think that uh, you can't stand. The enemy will present it to you. It's like, you can't do this, you can't do yeah. this. Well, we can do all things through Christ. It is that anointing that make that difference in your yeah. life. You need him. You can't do it without him. You can't stand on your own. No, you can't. Not on your own. But through Christ Jesus, that's why Jesus died for us. That's why he went to the cross and paid the price and gave his life. Yes, that's right. That perfect sacrifice yes. of Lamb of God, Jesus, Thank that's you, who Jesus. he was. Thank you, Lord. And he gave his life for me and for you. And through him, we can do yeah, it. That's right. You can do it, okay? Yeah. So look up. I want to I want to read Ephesians uh, chapter six verse thirteen on the King James version this morning. Mm-hmm. On the, the last verse in that song it says signs of the time are everywhere. How many of those signs of the time are everywhere? Mm-hmm. It says give your life to the Lord. Don't mm-hmm. put off today for tomorrow. God mm-hmm. will send return. You know how we procrastinate sometimes. Yeah. We we'll put things yeah. out. You know yeah. I get up someone. Oh, I, I do this. And then the day come out. Oh, I do it tomorrow. But now mm-hmm. this is something you can't be putting off. If, mm-hmm. if God is drawing you to get right, get saved, you need to get saved because we don't know what's mm-hmm. going to take place in our nation. All mm-hmm. I know is he told us it would be like this in the last days. But this is what he said. Even mm-hmm. though we see all the chaos and stuff going on around us, this is what we mm-hmm. got to do. Mm-hmm. He said, wherefore, take unto you the, the whole arm of God that you will be able to withstand in the evil day. In other words, mm-hmm. there's some mm-hmm. evil going to be on the land. You're going to see it with your eyes. That's right. You're going to see mm-hmm. crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, now, what, men love men, women mm-hmm. love women, and, and you mm-hmm. know, it's okay for men to have pornography going with young teenagers and all this, all mm-hmm. kind of crazy stuff, tra- trafficking, mm-hmm. drugs, mm-hmm. you know, and if you're not careful as a saint of God, you're afraid to say, well, okay, you know, because we're supposed to walk in love. I reckon it's okay, you know, but we got to stand on God's word. We got to put on the whole arm of God. He said, in the evil day, haven't done all to stay. In other words, mm-hmm. haven't done all. You're going to see all this crazy stuff going on. What you got to do as a child of God, you're going to have to stand on God's word. I don't care what they say and what they, you know, what they're doing. You know, now, if you really look at this thing, and I was, I was talking to him, look at this thing, look at the nation, 
I mean, it's not just the United States, it's, it's worldwide. That's right. Pandemic, yeah. whatever you want to call this day and time. Mm-hmm. Got to wear a mask. Can't go inside. Can't do this. Some Closing down some churches and all mm-hmm. this. All kind of, mm-hmm. If you really look at it, you would think, oh my God, it's, it's orchestrated by the devil. Mm-hmm. The number one mm-hmm. thing is he's doing is trying to shut the church down. No one thing he's trying to put doubt in people's mind. Or maybe it's not a God. Oh, mm-hmm. well, they can do that if they want to. It's okay to, to, to be a couple and switch couples and all kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's okay. That's the thing today. No, you better get your Bible up. Pick your Bible up. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. this day and time, I know we got the phone, but let's pick your Bible up, push the, get the dust off of it, and start reading it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because we're in the evil day, and you're going to see some kind of crazy stuff, and God is mm-hmm. saying, you're going to see all this stuff, but stand on my word, because when I return, right. I'm going to look for I'm going right. to look for saints of God. I'm going to look for mm-hmm. holy people. Mm-hmm. In a way. Mm-hmm. It is. It's, uh, it's, uh, he made it plain to us in that vision, in that sixth chapter, he says, it's, you know, it's nothing new. That's There's right. nothing new. That's right. What you are going through, what we are going through, That's right. there are the same situations, the same thing happened of old, times of old, okay? In that vision 6, chapter, in verse 13, wherefore, he says, take unto you the whole armor of God. You got to get it all. You got to. That you, and why? Why take the whole arm of God? That you may be able, able right. to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, you still be standing. Yeah. And only the word of God. I told you, it is, it is Jesus that made that difference. It is that anointing. You can't do it in yourself. But when you take the whole arm of God, the word of God, and you put him on, okay? <laughs> you put that word before you, in your ears, in your eyes, and, and let it uh, penetrate down into your being. Now, you got on the arm of God. Now you can stand. You got strength. It is not you. It is he that dwell within you, which is the word of God, which you just put in you. Amen. Amen. And God said, you will be able to stand. I don't care what it looks like. People say, oh, what we're going to do? Gas is going up. Oh, it's going up. It's going up. Look at gas. And everywhere you go, you go by the service station, and you will panic if you are not careful. If you don't have the word of God, you will see that. You'll panic. People going to uh, talk about now that the shelves in the grocery store now, there are some uh, are going empty. People panicking. And what happened? I find myself doing the same thing, running to the grocery store. Let me get some stuff so it'll be some for us. You know, listen, put on the whole arm of God and you will have, listen to God, obey him. He'll tell you what to do. Sometimes he would tell us some things, have some things that he, that he told us. I'm like, Lord, that don't make no sense. That's because everything's looking good right now, see. But then down the road, there were some things that was coming. We have seen that happen over the years. God spoke about, do this. You better do what he's saying. When everybody else is just flourishing, everything looked good, it looked bright, like, oh, it's great. But God says, go do this. You better do what he said do. Yes. Because that means that something's coming down the road that you don't know about. Your senses have not picked up. But the Spirit of God in you, he's telling you, go do this. And so we start doing some things that God told us to do, and it's like, wow, he know what he's talking about. And when it comes to pass, it's like, wow, that's what that was. Obey him. Just obey him. Put on that armor. You better put it on. <laughs> you'll be sustained and taken care of in times of famine, in times of trouble. You, you'll be taken care of. Trust him. <clears throat> Amen. You know what um, the scripture says in Hebrew 10, 25? I, I like it out of the Passion. It's Hebrew 10, 25. It says, this is not the time to pull away and then elect. It's mm-hmm. talking about the church. It's not the time to pull away. Meeting together, That's right. That's right. as mm-hmm. some have formed the habit of doing, how many know now, it's a habit. Mm-hmm. People say, well, well I ain't been yeah. in church so long, I just don't feel like going now. Yeah. Hard to go back. Hard to go back. Yeah. You don't yeah. He said, but don't, <laughs> he said, don't pull away. He said, some have formed the habit of doing. In fact, mm-hmm. we should come together even more frequently. Why? Because you're going to stand. You got to stand. There's mm-hmm. some evil stuff going on. You got to stand. And you need to be around people that are strong, that you that can encourage you so you can stand doing this thing. Now, if you're not, you mm-hmm. find yourself drifting on down the road. Don't even know it. Mm-hmm. Don't right. even know. You don't even right. know. You're just drifting down the road. Don't even know. You think, oh, I'm okay, you know. Yeah. Eager to encourage yeah. and yeah. urge each other <clears throat> onward as we anticipate that the day's drawing. Mm-hmm. We're in an evil day. It We're is. gonna have to stand, you know. Uh, the Proverbs twenty one, and and you know today, <coughs> you know people say, well, it's okay to drink sociable. You know, I never drink, so I I don't have a problem with that, you know. But I, you know, for me, my house, we're gonna serve the Lord, and He says that 
Wine makes mm-hmm. you mean. <laughs> he said, beer makes you quarrelsome. A staggering drunk is not much fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is the word of God. So what I'm saying, we're going to have to get back to the mm-hmm. Bible and start reading the Bible. Start reading the Bible so you know what's in it. You know, I know that some people... <coughs> Today you might want to mess. I did you want you like we like to get being careful. We like to praise the Lord, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Glory, thank you, Jesus. You know, just go, and then you know we go home and, and we hear the word. You know, we just hollering the preacher and he and we go out the door. You gonna have some problems. <laughs> and yeah, you praise the Lord. It's good to praise the Lord. But it, what did he say? Did he tell you how to live your life that week? You need <laughs> you need to stand on God's word because you're gonna walk out the door and you're gonna be faced with some problems that you don't even know how to deal with. But if you get in the word, you'll be able to stand, having done all to stand, you know, stand on God's word. God is still God. But for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's right. You know, that thing that happened, this pandemic, this thing is designed by Satan. He's at the root of it. That's right. And he come to steal, kill, and right. to destroy. That's what the word of God said. And that's exactly what he got in there and tried to do. And it worked for a lot of people. He stole their peace. Yeah. Stole their joy. That's right. People that was, you know, look like they was 50 50. In other words, are you for God or are you not? And that, as long as things are looking good, I'm in, things looking bad, I'm out, you know. But this right here, this pandemic put pressure on the people. Let's see who you are. Let's see if you really stand for God. Then when that pressure comes and when the enemy says, don't go to church, what do you do? Well, they said, don't go to church. That's right. So what happened? You. You better put on the arm of God so you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You better put it on. I'm telling you what, because Satan is out. You know, he said that in the book of Timothy, he says the perilous times will come. Well, we in it. <laughs> you shouldn't be surprised, even though it's shocking. Like, yes. what is this? But he says perilous That's times, right. difficult times difficult are coming. Time. We're in that day, difficult times. Who would ever thought? It would be like this, but God knew, for he forewarned us. He talked about it. He told about it in 2 Timothy 3rd chapter, plain as can be. He says, remember this. There are some terrible times coming in the last days. This is, this is a 2 Timothy 3rd chapter, 5 verse. Let me, I'll read it. You know, okay, read it. Okay. He says, remember this. There are some terrible times coming in the last days. People will love only themselves and money. (laughs) Wow. They will be proud and boast about themselves. They will abuse others with insults. They will not obey their parents. They will be ungrateful and against all that is pleasing to God. They will have no love for others and will refuse to forgive anyone. They will talk about others to hurt them and will have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. People will turn against their friends. They will do foolish things without thinking and will be so proud of themselves. Instead of loving God, they will love pleasure. They will go on pretending to be devoted to God, but they will refuse to to, uh, to let that devotion change the way they live. Stay away from these people. That's what the word say. Stay away from them. I'll be why? Because that will have a tendency to pull you that same direction. You know, evil communication yeah. corrupt yeah. good manners. It will pull <laughs> you. Stay away from them. I'm telling you why it seems right. There's a way that seems right, but the end of it are ways of death. That's what, that's what the word of God. We don't want to be caught by surprise. Jesus come, and when you find yourself, eternally lost. You don't want that. You don't want to be caught by surprise. Watch Satan. He's nasty. Yeah. He's nasty. He's trying to steal your joy, steal your peace, kill you. That's what he's all about. Nothing good. Mm. You know, I saw a video clip. <laughs> yes, I think my husband showed them to go to show you how, how chaos things have gotten out of, out of whack. The woman uh, pulled up at a I don't know, it was some <coughs> fast food place in a, to get a cup of coffee or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She didn't have a mask on. Well, she's in her car. She pulls up to the window, and he mm-hmm. says, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I can give you a mask. She says, hmm? In other words, she doesn't have a mask. He said, I got a mask. She said, 
excuse me, sir, you mean you can't give me my coffee, mm -hmm. but you can hand me a mask out the window? See how wacky that, everything's again. I mean, and I sometimes I think sometimes we go out to eat in a restaurant. I thought, Beautiful. you know, this is sort of sort of stupid. It's all designed by saying you can walk into a restaurant, you got to put mm -hmm. the mask on. But as soon as you get in the in the restaurant, you can order your food and take the mask off. What? what? It's confusing. It's, yeah, to me, it's yeah. just confusing, and <coughs> it's like, <laughs> what in the world is going on? But see, the scripture says in Psalm mm -hmm. 91, "This shall not come to us." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No plagues, no mm -hmm. diseases, no pestilence. Right. Mm -hmm. And we got to stand on God's word. I mean, mm -hmm. the word going to put all this trap, mm -hmm. all this, but we got to go back to the base, back to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Read Psalm 9. What does it say? Shall not come mm -hmm. now thee. And that's what I stand on all the time. Sometimes I actually <coughs> forget that something's going on. I get out of the car, right. get half with you. Oh, I ain't got my mask. It happened to us the other day. We, yeah. we walked yeah. on into the place, and, <coughs> and the man told us, he said, you know, they... They don't. They don't call the yeah, health department on me. Somebody reported him because twice. Because people, mm -hmm. everybody didn't have a mask yeah. on. I'm thinking it, it's, it's it's ridiculous. It's, it's, uh, I mean, and you know, <coughs> last year they said where well, kids can go to school because it's not affecting them, and now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's affecting the kids. And it's like all kind of. We got to get back to the Bible. I think that's what God is saying. Listen, saints of God, it's time mm -hmm. to get back on your knees. Right. It's time to start right. standing on God's word. Stand until I return. Right. Because you're going to see, he told us it would be this way, so I don't know why we're so shocked. But when mm -hmm. we stand on God's word, all that fear will leave. All the, mm -hmm. you know, pan mm -hmm. panic attacks and mm -hmm. all this, and you know, you, you, you know, you hear somebody call, oh, you, you want to mm -hmm. jump. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's just gone just chaotic. Mm -hmm. But we got to get back to God's word. And it said, but as we which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Mm -hmm. Because it is written, mm -hmm. be ye holy, for I am holy. We got to get back to being holy. Because Christ is coming back. He's coming back for that's his right. church. Mm -hmm. Not a fearful church. <coughs> I mean, but mm -hmm. a church that's standing on God's word. Yeah, what happened, you know, I see this, that the church is weak, extremely weak. It's sad. It's, uh, they say they're for God. They say, oh, yeah, I'm born again. I'm filled with the Spirit of God, yeah. But then when the pressure hit, that will test you, because you're going to be tried. You're going to be tested. And they're weak, extremely weak. It's, it's so sad. And then they'll cave in to what is not the truth. And they're like, I thought you were for God. I thought you said that you were for They're not feeding on the Word, but they are feeding on propaganda. They're feeding on media, yeah. feeding on things that designed by Satan to put you in fear. And they don't even realize it's designed by Satan to put you in fear. Because if you see, if Satan can get you in fear, he can get a hope. But if he can't, if he gets you in faith, you can't see perfect love, the scripture says, cast out all fear. And God is love. So if you're in the word of God, you're in love. <laughs> and you feeding on this word, that's love. And all of a sudden, you forget what's going on. And you, sometimes you do have to turn off some of the things that will bring fear into your life. Or what you, God says, take heed what you hear and how you hear it. You got to take heed to it. Because I'm telling you, it's some stuff out there. It's designed to take you down, to take you out. And it's working very well, see? But what happens if you're not aware of it? You don't realize what's going on. You turn around and you go with the crowd. That's right. Well, everybody's doing this. Everybody's <coughs> not doing it. It just looks like everybody going that way. But the church is, is weak. Don't be weak. You know, God was meek, but he wasn't weak. Jesus was meek, but not weak. He was strong. He would stand up. He would tell the Pharisees straight to their faces. He'll tell you, yeah, you're hypocrites. He'll tell them straight to their face. You know, we can't be double-minded. God says a double-minded man <laughs> is unstable oh. in all of his, in how many? All of his ways. All of them. Not some of them, not part of it. It's double-minded. One minute, he's, who you going with? Whatever crowd you with, that's what you go with. Double-minded. He says, don't let that man think that he'll receive anything of the Lord. No, he won't. Because you're, you're double-minded. You got to be standing firm. Then when the pressure hit and everybody looking and says, oh, what they going to do? What they going to do? They told them not to do this. and What they going to do? You st they find you still stern and standing with God. Then they begin to respect yeah. you. Okay? Right. Heaven will bag you up. You got angels are, are watching over you. Yes, they are. 
Hebrews 1 and 14 says that they, angels, are ministering spirits that have been sent forth to minister for those who are heirs of salvation. We are taken care of. I don't care in the, right in the midst of, of pressures and fearful things and fearful sights. God said it's going to be fearful things, fearful sights are going to be, and men's hearts will fail them because of fear. And it really is men's heart is failing them because of fearful sights they're looking at. Go to the Word of God, and the Word of God will take away that fear. That Word of God will love, will cast out all that, that doubt, unbelief, all that fear. It'll remove it, and you'll have peace. I'm telling you, it'll be peace. It'll be even that peace that'll flow like a river. And you can laugh, and people looking and say, hi in the world, are they so happy in the midst of this? They need to go somewhere and run and hide and close your blind. No, <laughs> we go praise God, because we got the victory. We held the victory through Christ Jesus. You got to know that. The world don't know that. <laughs> but but you, you can have that. You have that if you've been born again in Christ. Exercise it. Mm. Amen. Praise <coughs> God. You know, we're living in a time where your faith is being tested. Look at your neighbor and say, your faith is being tested. Your faith is being tested. <coughs> in First Peter chapter 1, verse 6 through 8, talking about your faith being tested. It says, so be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead. Even through the going is rough for a while down here. Uh -huh. These trials, listen to this, it says, these trials are only to test your faith. That's right. To see right. whether uh -huh. or not it is strong and pure. Uh -huh. It has been right. tested as fire tests gold and purifies it, and your faith is far more precious to God uh -huh. than mere gold. So if uh -huh. your faith remains strong and after being tried in the test uh -huh. through a fiery trials, uh -huh. yeah. will bring you much <coughs> praise and glory uh -huh. and honor on the day of his return. That's good. Uh -huh. You love him even though you have never seen him. Uh -huh. Through not seeing him, you trust him. Uh -huh. And even now you are happy with the inexpressible joy that comes from him. Heaven itself. Your faith mm -hmm. is being tested. You know, we talked, I think it was Tuesday night we talked about Daniel, how he was thrown into mm -hmm. the lion. His, his faith was being tested. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, no, I'm going to still serve the Lord. I'm, you know, they said, oh, no, you can't do that. You can't worship. No. So they throw him in the lion's den. His faith was being tested. Right. What are you going to do when it comes to, if, to a That's trial right. and test like uh, that? That's right. Mm -hmm. Are you going to stand with God? Mm -hmm. Are you going to? Well, mm -hmm. what they gonna say? They might be saying they might throw me in jail. They, oh no, I can't do this. Like Pastor, said, I can't mm -hmm. do this. They, they watching me. They, what are you gonna do? When your, your, it might be your faith being tested. God is saying, are you gonna stand with me? I just go along with what the world is saying. Daniel's faith was tested, and he passed the test. They got up next morning. He was still up in there. He was still up in there. Alive. That's right, you was alive. <laughs> How many know highly? Now that's, just, that's something to praise God about, because listen, his faith was tested and he stood through the trials, come out. And listen, they said, oh no, we're going to start serving Daniel's God now, because right. listen, right. hey, the, the lion, the lion did not even touch him. I bet the lion was hungry, but he couldn't touch him, because mm -hmm. God was with yeah. him. Even though you go right. through some fiery trials, mm -hmm. this, this trials this day and time, God is with you. That's what you got. That's why you got to get your Bible out and read it, so you know that know he's it. with you, that he That's is right. your helper in the time of trouble. He'll be right there for you, mm -hmm. no matter what you're going through. He's there with you. Mm-hmm. He is guarded right there, which but it's, it's, when you when you read that story uh, of, of Daniel, that situation yeah. there, he was put under a tremendous amount of pressure. What you gonna sure do? Was. But because Daniel had a relationship with God, I believe he didn't blink. He says, Oh no. He says, What are you you're not supposed to be Daniel, you up here praying to a, another God, they call him another God, but the true God. What do you, and they would set him up. See, you got people out there trying to set you up for a fall. But when you stand standing with God, uh, love never fall. <laughs> love never fail, and God is love. And, it, and your faith, your love is going to be tried. And I'm sure. telling you, it's going right. through a trying part. Daniel stood. He stayed with God. Now, the, the Bible said the just shall live by his faith. So when that pressure hits you, you do. There are come times like I like, ooh, I want to double back here. Ooh, this is tough. What? But stand, stand. If you stand, 
God there to meet you on the other side. In fact, he's there with you all the time. You just don't know it. And let's see what he's going to do. Daniel stood, and he says, no, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, deny God. I'm going to keep praying to God. I'm going to keep looking to God. And they took, and they set him up. The government set him up. The leaders set him up. They said, we got him now. And the king did not want to do it. And they throwed him into a, the lion's den because he wasn't doing what the government told him to do. But he stood with God. And when he throwed him in, the king says, actually the king was saying he didn't want to do it. He says, your God, whom you serve, Daniel, will deliver you. At least he was hoping he would. Right. But see, the king didn't know Daniel, uh, Daniel's God, who was God Almighty Jehovah. So what did he do? They throwed him in the lion's den and put a big rock over the cave's mouth and sealed it. Meaning what? It cannot be reversed. And they were like, ooh, can you see the world? Yeah. We got him, we got him, we got him. That's what the world thinking now. Yeah. We got him, we got the church. We're going to pull him down. Uh-uh-uh. Well, well yeah. stand yeah. who you're standing for. God, the word said, if God be for you, he's more than the whole world against you. That's scripture. If God is for you now, if you have you done, done what he said, you're doing his word, you're in his word, he's more than the whole world against you. Now, your flesh might not know that, <laughs> but the word said. So let's see, as you go through this trial, let's see what happens. Okay? Daniel stood. The king fasted all night. His sleep went from him. He just, he couldn't eat. His appetite went. Early the next morning, he got up, went to the, went to the cave's mouth, and, and hollered out, Oh, Daniel, was your God able to deliver you from the lion's mouth? Daniel down there laying on the lion's on the belly sleep. So he, Daniel says, Oh, king, look, he didn't have no fear. He feared God rather than. See what the word will do? It'll take that spirit from him. He said, oh, king, live forever. <laughs> God sent his angel and closed the, the, the lion's mouth. The king was glad. They said, get him up. And they pulled him up out of that, that pit. And he went and he says, all those who accused him, yeah. those who set him up, who thought we got him, he got them, their wives, and their children and throw them into the cave. And the, and the scripture says, listen, before they hit the bottom, the lion had mastery of them and broke their bones and eat them. Mm. They didn't eat I think one translation says that after they eat them, they chewed and gnawed on their bones. You know, that's the nature of a, of a dog, the nature of, a, of an animal. Not on their bone. In other words, they had mastery of them. They finished. <laughs> Boy, that was good. But Daniel, safe. Wow. You're going to be tried and tested. Are you yeah. going to stand with God? Because they say, I don't care what they say. Who are they? <laughs> <laughs> Keep in your mind, God made they, made them. It is God, the one you fear. That's the one you fear. He said, God is the one you're able to um, take you away from here, you die, you leave here, and your soul be cast into the hell, okay? God is the one that you want to fear, yes. Yeah. After Satan get rid of you, then what else can he do? <laughs> but after you die, now where will your soul be if you haven't come to Jesus? And Jesus paid the price so we won't have to. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. He paid the price. You don't have to work for it. Believe for it <laughs> and receive him. Amen. You know, right. I keep hearing, I don't know if it's Psalms 1, or, I don't have my Bible in Psalms 1, or is it Proverbs 1, but it says I'm like a tree planted by the water. Is that, a, mm -hmm. yes. is that Psalms yes. 1? I believe we're, I believe we're Psalms 1. Psalms 1. Can you read that for me? I just, I keep hearing I that. I think that we can go there and do that. Okay. He says here, <clears throat> oh, okay. He's in Psalms 1 here out of the King James Version that we read it like this. He says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Do you hear that? You are blessed if you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand it in the way of sinners, nor sit it in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. 
And in his law doth he meditate day and night. There's your life right there, meditating on God's word. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. That's a powerful word, y'all. That's right. I'm going That's to powerful. Stand. I'm going to stay on God's word until you return. You hear that? Take it and meditate on that. That's powerful, right? You are blessed. (laughs) If you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, what they say, what the world is telling you to do, you better take your word and find out what the word is saying. Because they're telling you some things that is pulling you away from God. Why? So we can control you. We can tell you, you can't have church. Oh, no, you can't have. But what they don't know, that God is all-powerful and all-knowing. And it's coming a day. It's coming a day. Whatever man did, whatever he sowed, whatever he done, he will give an account of it. I don't care if you don't believe that there's a heaven. I don't care if you don't believe there's a hell. That still doesn't take away from the word of God. There is coming a day that you're going to be judged. And you will give an account in the things you have done in your body, whether good or whether evil. You will give an account. And Jesus paid the price. He's saying, it's done. There's no excuse, in other words. If you believe on Jesus and trust him and come out from the them and be separated, touch not that unclean thing. God says, and I will receive you. I'll hear you. It's your choice. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right, so if you would like to know Jesus as your Lord, then that's, that's a, <laughs> talking about coming out from the money and being separated. We begin, we go to the Romans, the book of Romans here. If you want to see Jesus, your Lord and Savior, the 10th chapter here of the verse, he says in verse 9, he says, Now if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in the heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's not by works, y'all. It's not by works. It's by trusting, believing God. Just simple, confessing it with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believing it in your heart. God says, you shall be saved. That is not hard, but the world will make it seem so hard. It'll make it seem, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. I heard people say this. When I stop running around on my wife, and when I stop uh, going to wild parties and doing all this kind of stuff, and I'm going to stop doing this and doing that, then I'll go to church and get saved. Listen, God says, come as you are. You can't do it yourself. You can't. I've seen people going years, years and years, uh, saying that, oh, I can stop this whenever I want to. I can stop drinking whenever I want to. I can stop it. Well, why haven't you done it? You saw that it hadn't got you nowhere. You're miserable, making your family miserable. You can't do it. It's a deception from Satan. It's just a matter of confessing it with your mouth that Jesus is the one. He's Lord and believing it in your heart. And God says, you shall be saved. Just that simple. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for those that who have come to you and have made their decision, who have confessed with their mouth that you are the Lord, you are the Son of the living God, and they believe it in their heart, in their spirit, that, God, you have raised them from the dead. And your word declares now, those that have done that, now they are a new creation in Christ. They are saved, saved from an eternal hell. They are saved, just that simple. Thank you, Father, for it. In the name of Jesus, now we call upon you, Lord, to give them strength, give them wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of the word. You get in the word. Hear the word. Ask God. He said, you have not because you asked. Ask him, where do I go from here, Lord? Get you uh, somewhere, feed on the word. Get you a church. Feed on the word. Ask God to guide you. He will guide you because you're a new creation. And now you can hear before you couldn't hear because you're blind. Sin will blind you. 
But now after you confess him, now you can see, you can hear. If you've done that with your heart and you meant it from your heart, you're a new creation. Amen. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise Lord. Yeah. All right, concerning our giving, once again, we'd like to go in 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. As we are sown our seed before God again, if we come before Him, you tithe the tithe. You don't, you don't uh, you gild the tithe. You tithe anything above it. So, according to the Word of God, 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verse 6 reads like this He said, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man. According as he had purpose in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Every good work. Amen. So, Father, we thank you again, and we bring our seed before you again this day. We thank you, Father, in faith. We tied the tide. And so I will see our offerings into the kingdom of God. We thank you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, you're not a man that you should lie. And I thank you, Lord, they will receive. Yes, they will receive. Lord, in the name of Jesus, open the door for them, Lord. The abiding, the grace of God may continue to abound upon their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh,